Hi everyone, this is Pat. And the message that I have tonight, I have entitled, A Love That Stuns the World. And the Bible verse is John chapter 13, um, 34 and 35. Um, and this is how it reads. It says, A new commandment I give to you, that you are to love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Then all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Well, let me pray right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you um, that um, you have captured my heart and you continue to teach me things from your word. And um, I pray, Father, that um, I will be able to Take this message of love and just um, share what it is that you've taught me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And um, that um, verse, those two verses came um, as Jesus was about to um, go to the cross. It was the night before he was going to the cross. Is um, We call it Holy Thursday. Um, and he was at um, dinner with his um, apostles, and um, he wanted to give them um, the last things that they needed to know. So um, that verse came from some chapters. There are like about five chapters in John that have a lot of teaching from about from Jesus. It's a lot of, I should say, verbal teaching because the whole Bible is a teaching about Jesus. We learn why we need him in the Old Testament, and we learn um, about him in the beginning of the New. And even in the old part, on the last part of the Old Testament, we actually learn um, what is he going to look, what is he going to look like in the prophecies of the Old Testament. But also keep in mind that Jesus knew the Old Testament. So we have, if we want to know him, we got to know the Old Testament. I, I'll have people say to me, ah, I'm going to only know the red, what the red um, letters say in the Bible, meaning what Jesus said. Then um, they will be curtailed um, if they did, that they will be, um, they won't really know Jesus because Jesus um, also knew the Old Testament. And so to understand um, the old, um, the Old Testament is very important to understand um, Jesus, and the Bible um, summarizes all about Jesus in this way. Is um, John three sixteen? That's why people like it so much because it really is a summary of the good news of the gospel, and it says that God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And when those words become more than words to you, when they strike your heart um, in a way of truth, um, then um, is something significant happening. Um, I believe that you probably have crossed over from death to life. You know, we can be religious, um, we can go to church, we can read the Bible, we can um, learn um, Bible verses, but um, what makes the difference is when we become a recipient of that love that stuns the world. Um, the one who wrote that verse about, um, that you know, this one was began with um, a new commandment, it was the Apostle John. And this is what I always love about John. Um, John always um, t says about himself, he is the apostle that Jesus loves. And boy, can I identify with that because my life before Jesus was, um, I did not feel the love of God. I mean, I would feel it every once in a while, but I did not have a sustaining truth that God loved me. Um, I needed that. 
And that's the difference. When we have that sustaining truth that God loves us, then if something happens, um, we get filled up to the point that we overflow. It overflows in our life. And so we want um, to have that understanding that God loves us in a way that um, it, it makes sense to us. I think that that was um, one of the things that I heard one time somebody was speaking on a meeting. And she spoke about her own, um, you know, encounter with the Lord. And she said she finally had to pray and ask the Lord, um, let me feel your love in a way that makes, makes it real, that I can understand it. And I see her life now, and I know that she is one who knows that she also is deeply loved and highly favored by God. Um, this is how it has to be because otherwise we feel depleted. If we try to love people, you know, like the way it says in those verses that, and even when it says in the Old Testament to love our neighbor as ourself, no, uh, we can't do that without the Holy Spirit of living in us. It's utterly impossible for me to love in that way. And so I have to know the love of God. Not that he loved me yesterday and the day before. Those are good. I like that. To see how he's been working in my life for years and years now. But where the rubber meets the road is, do I know that he loves me today? Um, do I know that I can never be separated from that love? The Bible says, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when we know that type of love, when we know that type of love in ourselves, um, we're not... I've said it over and over again. You guys, we're not roller derby people. We're not, you know, having to talk about people and put them down and point out their shortcomings and fight the wrong enemy. And we don't do that. We don't have to. Because we realize that they're not our enemy. We do have an enemy. But why waste time, you know, when we can be making... Um, eternal marks against that enemy. And so to have a love that stuns the world, to have a love that stuns the world, uh, we have to know in our own hearts that we have a love that can never be taken away, a love that, um, please, it's just um, almost... I can't always, I'm speechless sometimes to think about it. But if you are not experiencing that love, stay in his word and keep asking him to um, make it real for you. Make his love real for you. Because then you will be able to have compassion and love for people in the way that he wants you to have it. Because he'll have it, it'll be his love that is overflowing from your life um, into the life of others. And it'll give you a peace and um, it'll give you a place um, and it'll give you joy. You'll be able to smile even through hard, tough times. You'll be able to do that. That's how God is. He's amazing. But let me pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are an amazing God. And so we want to come to you and just let this mouth just speak the truth. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And so, Father, if there's anyone here listening to this message and they are ashamed of the name of Jesus, that might be key. Um, you know, Jesus is Lord. And we are not ashamed of the gospel, the good news. It's a power. It's power. 
We're not ashamed of that power. Thank you, Father. Um, thank you for giving us new life. Um, thank you, Father, for even giving us the body of Christ. And it's in the name of Jesus, Lord, that I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful rest of your night. And God bless you. Bye-bye.